Joining us is the Deputy Opposition Leader, Susan Lee. Susan, uh, thanks for your time as always. So the Prime Minister yesterday said he didn't know the Transport Minister made that captain's call on Qatar. How likely is that? He came back into the Parliament, Pete, to correct the record. This just doesn't stack up. And I tell you what also doesn't stack up is we've got the Treasurer of this country. I'm sitting here bewildered. He actually thinks rising international airfares, higher costs for consumers are in the national interest. How can that be? We know that international airfares are up by 50%, that seat capacity is down by 25%, and that we're missing out on about $788 million a year from inbound tourism, spending money desperately needed by our businesses across this country. And the Treasurer just uh, wishy-washy on your program saying, oh, well, it's all about the national interest. Well, Anthony Albanese's behaviour, I tell you, um, his job is to balance the interests of citizens, of the nation and of vested interests. And unfortunately, uh, he shouldn't be balancing vested interests. He's put them first in not looking after the interests of Australian citizens and the interests of the nation. There's something, I mean, are, we, are we all missing something here? They keep pointing to the national interest, but I'm trying to work out what, 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 the main, what that main part is, but, that, but everyone's pointing the finger in different ways. I mean, how are you reading into that? Does, does anyone know? I mean, Labor's all at we, sea on this one, or are they just keeping it stum? Well, we've, we've heard so many different explanations for why the 28 additional Gata Airlines flights have been refused, which goes to show that uh, the government is being shifty on this. The Prime Minister's answers are shifty. He's not explaining who he spoke to, what he said and what advice he received. He's giving different answers. He's having to come back into the Parliament after question time. It's really unusual, I have to say to your viewers, for a Prime Minister to do that, to come straight back in and add to an answer. Because the answer was shifty. The answer was avoiding the real substance here, which was that this Prime Minister has not shown leadership. What is this special relationship between Anthony Albanese and Qantas that has actually led to consumers in this country uh, getting another whack on their cost of living and having to face these ridiculously overpriced airfares when there's capacity out there waiting to come and actually support their trips overseas, their return to family and friends? Coming out of COVID... These visits overseas are absolutely... They're front and centre for so many mm. Australians. And they're furious about this, Pete. They're furious. OK, so Jim Chalmers is saying there they're not going to reverse their decision when it comes to Qatar, even though a whole bunch of states and a whole bunch of business leaders, even Wayne Swan, thinks that they should. So just for the record, you believe that this decision should be overturned and allowing Qatar more flights into Australia? Absolutely, we should have more flights into Australia. And Gata has From, offered, and they're an yep. airline that many Australians choose. But, Pete, we'll unravel this. This is okay. really important through the Senate inquiry. Bridget McKenzie has done great work. And uh, ministers and prime ministers will have to give complete answers, and we need to find out what went on here. OK. As you know, Australian women were invasively searched in Qatar without compensation or even an apology. So why should Qatar be rewarded with extra mm -hmm. flights then? And we've made strong comments about those activities and those actions, and, of course, we do not condone them. But we had the Prime Minister standing up saying, oh, Gata can come to this country, they just have to come to Adelaide, uh, or they just have to buy bigger jets, which is ridiculous. So if they're using that as one of their excuses, and I think they did, they had a long list of excuses, then they need to actually be consistent about it. I'm on the side of consumers, Pete. I'm on the side of Australians who are looking at these ridiculous airfares mm. and can't have precious time with family and friends when the answer is sitting in front of this government that is looking after vested interests, not the national interest. Well, I mean, when they, when they don't come firm on a decision, when they talk about the national interest and they don't really elaborate on that, then it forces us all to speculate. So one point I'm going to speculate on is the fact that Qatar at the moment is embroiled in a corruption scandal in Europe. If they get extra flights here and perhaps even take a stake of Virgin down the track, would you have any concerns about Qatar having too much political influence here? Oh, look, that's a series of events that I can't comment on, Pete. Uh, that's speculative, as you have just said. Yeah. But uh, we've also had the Prime Minister saying we've got one of the most competitive um, aviation regimes in the world. That doesn't stack up either. International aviation experts have said, how is this so? And have actually pointed to European skies as being far more competitive. So um, I think we need to deal with... The government needs to deal with the issue in front of it now okay. and needs to show leadership and needs to show that it cares about cost-of-living issues and this is a cost-of-living issue. 
for Australian consumers. Should. I don't think they expected them to be so angry, but I can absolutely understand why they are. OK. Should Richard Goida follow Alan Joyce out the door at Qantas? Look, I'm not going to heck to the board or the chairman. Uh, we've got a new era. I wish the new chairman, Vanessa Hudson, really good luck. Uh, it's great that we have a woman taking over the job. I've got a personal stake in aviation, as you know, Pete. I uh, learnt to fly and wanted myself to fly the big jets years ago after paying for my flying training and, and the big jets said we won't take a woman in the left-hand seat. It's too early in the early 1980s. But I'm delighted that a woman okay. is leading Qantas now. And just finally, just on, on Alan Joyce's... Um, bonuses. Uh, are, are you comfortable with him getting all of those bonuses? I put this um, question to the Treasurer as well. Despite taxpayers saving the airline during the pandemic, despite, you know, passengers getting a raw deal throughout the whole thing, are you comfortable with, with the level of bonuses that he's received and, and could well receive more of? No. How can any Australian be comfortable with this after seeing the performance of this airline when we had, I had constituents, so many call my office. They were on the phone for hours and hours trying to get refunds from flights that never even took off, that mm. they booked. Why Qantas knew that those flights never even took off. No, of course I'm not comfortable. And I think that you saw the Treasurer shifting uneasily there in the uh, interview because, of course, his mentor, Wayne Swan, has really actually said exactly the same thing. Yeah.